3000 performance rating. That is what I just got in a game that I played online recently. Just before we get into it, please let me know if you guys are enjoying these game analysis videos. I can do more like speedrun type live videos if you guys prefer, but I feel like I can be more instructive and go a bit more in depth to make my explanations a bit simpler in this format of video. So just let me know what you think about that. But anyway, <clears throat> let's get into the game. It's a hell of a game. Uh, we have the Sicilian defense. And I play, I, 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 I guess you could call it the Gotham variation. This is what he recommends. Where essentially you give up a uh, pawn on b4 so that you can play c3 with a tempo on the knight arrows man so you can have a tempo on the knight to get c3 d4 and e4 before black can have any pawns in the center because you've traded the c pawn off already black plays d5 takes takes and the move knight a3 which is incredibly tricky my opponent goes e5 which is not the right move but he plays it quite well knight b5 threatens oh my god a fork on c7 forking the king the queen and the rook so my opponent plays queen e4 check i block with bishop e2 now you might be wondering why i don't play knight to e2 so that the bishop maintains its defense of g2 but the reason for this is that if my knight goes to g2, my bishop is blocked off from getting out, right? Like the bishop can't get out now. And if I put my bishop on e2, my opponent, if he takes on g2, I can play bishop f3, which cuts the queen's retreat off, defends the rook through the queen, and once the queen retreats, I can win a rook. Although, maybe not in this position. Apparently knight e2 is best. Okay, okay, whatever. I'm an idiot. Um, luckily my opponent didn't play that. He instead took on d4. And here I think it's quite instructive. There's no need to take back. That pawn is not going anywhere. So I give him a check and I win the rook. And since the king is now on the d-file, he can't take my pawn. However, after knight f6, if I take the pawn, it's a horrible move. Not only for some tactical reason. Um, there's tactical reasons here why I can't do it, right? Um, but regardless of that, if we put that aside. If I take, I close the file. And there's no need for me to close the file. Um, it just means that black's king although on d8 is a lot safer because my queen is gonna have a much harder time actually targeting the king with the d file closed and black can't take me anyway you know because he's pinned so i just go knight f3 because i'd like to take the pawn with a piece so that the file remains open but there's no rush i am you know up a rook although my opponent has two pawns my opponent goes bishop d6. I now take. And I take because now I'm happy to trade everything. And what well, my opponent might play king out. And I can take the pawn. You know, I am up a rook, so trading is in my favor. My opponent instead played rook e8, which is a good move because if I castle now, then knight takes d4. And then after the pawn takes, I'm losing a piece back. And I'm actually only up the exchange now. Because remember, I was up a rook. So I have to be accurate. And I play knight take c6 check first. He can't take with the pawn because the bishop's hanging. Again, this is why I wanted to keep the file open. So he has to take with the queen to keep an eye on the bishop. But this means the queen takes her eye off of the bishop. So I can now castle. My opponent plays bishop d7. Trying to block the file off so that he can get his bishop out. I play bishop f3. 
attacking the queen, looking at some of the weak squares. I am up a rook, but I do need to try and get this knight out, because if my opponent can win this knight, I'm actually only up an exchange. And sure, it's probably still winning, but it's not as easy. And my knight is going to struggle to get out. My opponent goes knight e4, which practically is quite a good move. Just centralizes the knight. If I take it, his queen centralizes and his bishops actually become really strong. And I might have some problems uh, defending my king. So instead, I don't react. I'm happy for him to take the c3 pawn. You know, like I said, I'm up a rook. I don't care about a pawn. Now you might be going, okay, so why did you just take on a7 then? Isn't that just wasting a move? The point of taking on a7 isn't to win a pawn. The point is so the pawn no longer controls b6, and my knight now has an escape route. Not yet, because the queen still controls the square, but in the future, I have an escape route. My opponent plays bishop c5, which is actually a really good move. You know, he's targeting f7 with the knight and the bishop now, and my rook's under attack. So I have to retreat. I couldn't find a better square than a1. So I go to a1. Um, if I go to a2, there might be knight takes c3 with a fork in the future. And the other squares apart from a5 are taken up. But if I go to a5, I was thinking my opponent could just play bishop. Although he actually can't play bishop b6. What about pawn b6 though? I think I was worried about that. <laughs> so I just go to a1. My opponent goes queen g6. You know, there's ideas of bishop to h3 now. Uh, threatening checkmate. So, I decide on bishop e3. Because if we trade here, I damage the pawn structure. But, but, it opens up the second rank because my pawn steps off. And I can now bring my rook to help defend g2, which is my opponent's main source of counterplay. And of course, I trade off an aggressive piece. So instead, he takes on c3 with an attack on my queen. And here, if I move my queen, then the computer actually wants this, which, I mean, obviously it's plus 5. But there's no need for me to give my opponent chances. In this position, I sacrifice the queen. Which is actually a really good move. Because, okay, I'm up a rook. I take a bishop. And now I'm up a rook and a bishop. He takes my queen. And I take back. Meaning that I'm down a queen. But I have a... A knight, a bishop, and a rook for the queen. 3 plus 3 plus 5 is 11. And the queen is worth 9. My opponent's got an extra pawn, so I'm only actually up one point of material. But it's crushing. Because this king has no escape. My bishop cuts off his escape here. My knight does a good job at cutting off the escape here. And my rooks and my bishop are ready to get into the game to cause some real problems and black has no attack sure this is you know you, you could say this is un unnecessarily risky and you're probably right but you know it's online blitz let's go for a bit of style my opponent plays queen to f5 which attacks the bishop and defends the bishop on d7 so of course i can retreat the bishop but I'll give you guys an opportunity to find... Actually, no, it, it says it. Okay, it does say it, and I did play it. Knight to b6. Yeah, that was, that was a bit anticlimactic. Knight b6. And this is why rook a7 was played all those moves ago. So that the a7 pawn no longer controlled the b6. Controlled b6, not the b6. And now my knight attacks the bishop. As does my rook. And my opponent can't defend the bishop with the rook. Because bishop 
rook here is the only move to help defend, and I take it. And it's only defended by the queen. So I'm going to win the queen back. And it doesn't matter that my bishop's under attack. Because after queen takes c5, my opponent resigns. Because rook takes d7 is checkmate. My knight cuts off the king's escape square. His rook cuts off the other escape square. And my rook takes up all the other squares. And obviously the knight controls d7 as well. And that's checkmate. And the reason I wanted to show you guys this game is because I think it kind of helps to showcase how important it is to be clinical. Because here, I have a minute 30 and I use 30 seconds to decide to give up my queen. Because I figured, look, I'm already up material. The king can't go anywhere. This bishop is a liability. My opponent has no attack. My king is safe. And with the queen sacrifice, I'm going to liberate my knight. Now, my opponent makes it a bit easy by just, you know, blundering checkmate. But, I think it's all too easy in... Um, in this position just to move the queen and the game goes on sure but there's no reason for you to completely blacklist a move just because it sacrifices material you still need to consider it what actually happens if I give up the queen Your knight, 99 times out of 100 it's going to be like, the wrong thing to give up your queen. But sometimes not. And this game showcases that. And in the game review, I have a performance rating of 3,000. 3,000! With 96.5% accuracy. No inaccuracies, no mistakes, no misses, no blunders. Which I thought was insane. <laughs> I thought that was absolutely mental. Considering the game actually went on, like... 20 odd moves it's not like i just won from an opening trap so yeah that's the game hope you guys enjoyed please drop a like subscribe and comment if you did enjoy if you didn't enjoy i mean you wouldn't have stayed till the end of the video so i'm hoping you did uh and with that have a good one guys